and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast here with my good friend Dan Wiseman. How are you doing, Dan? I'm not too bad, mate. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm uh, I'm a little bit deflated. I'm not yep. going to lie. It's still... A bit raw. It's still raw, isn't yep. it? But nevertheless, I'm proud of the boys. Um, talk us through your Sunday, Dan, because I think we probably had very different Sundays. Yep. It was a... Uh, it was nice. We I headed down with uh, some family. Um, we went down there. Uh, my first time at the Green Man. Yeah, I'd ne- I'd never done it before. So uh, obviously, as soon as we got that west side of Wembley, that was one of the the pubs I wanted to visit. So I heard good things. And um, shout out to the guys there because they put on a, a great. Um, it was a great system. It was easy to get beers. The the Villa fans were in good spirits. The weather was pretty good, it which we weren't right, expecting. Yeah. So the sun was out, and uh, it was all making for a pretty positive experience. It was nice. I was bumping into a few people from back home. Um, my my seats were were pretty good. Then um, yeah, I mean to be honest with you, mate, I, I thought the whole day was um, was was good. I, I had a really good time. I thought uh, obviously we'll get into the the nitty gritty details of the game, I suppose. But um, I thought overall the performance was good, and I left on the coach back feeling pretty happy. I don't know about you. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, so I went out the night before because it was a night out that was planned before we made it to the final. Good so stuff, I was out in good Birmingham, stuff. Big up prism. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I, I had a slightly sore head in the morning uh, and halfway on our destination on the tube, uh, I realised I left the tickets in the car. Oh, no way. So we had to head back. That took an hour off our, uh, off our day, basically. <laughs> uh, Dad weren't happy. I weren't happy. Uh, That's unbelievable. Yeah, so good effort, we mate. Up, we, good so effort. We, we, we went and parked at Chalfont, I think. So yeah. I think we'd... we'd We'd done like 30 minutes on the tube already, so yeah. like it, was quite, it was quite a distance before we'd realised. I think actually it was whoever was tweeting on Heart of the Hole. My yeah. dad was scrolling through Twitter and he was like, tickets, tickets. Have we got our tickets? No. Yeah. No, apparently <laughs> not. Apparently not. Doing women in the right way. Yeah, I like of course, style, yeah, man. Mate. I mean, we, knew, we, we knew we weren't going to get in Box Park anyway, so we just thought, screw it. Yeah. Like, we may as well just go back to the car. <laughs> like, why not? Uh, but no, it, it, I mean... Uh, relatively easy parking there when you, if you mm-hmm. park further out it's all right coming on the tube it's fine whatever it would have been better if i didn't forget the tickets um but no it was a good day as you say i mean it was supposed to be rainy weren't it so yeah yeah i think we were kind of nice prepared surprise. for that so it was nice that it was you know relatively i would say warm but it was, it was sunny it was all right it was tolerable it was, wasn't it it's tropical really i guess yeah, I, I suppose that's this Sandwich, time of year isn't it yeah. <laughs> so no it was it, it was good it was a good day out but again we face a manchester team 10 years later mm. and it's another refereeing decision that we're left wounded talking about Dan isn't it yeah mate it's um, there's, a, there's a couple of things uh, which um, I kind of went and I tweeted about this after the game and it was so much of a case of I just wanted to leave it all out there and come away feeling as if we'd lost to a better footballing side and I know all that was definitely the case you can't help but feel that it could have so easily been different Um and it was I have to give a huge amount of credit to the boys because the first goal goes in um, and it it's not a bad goal to concede really uh, I, I thought that City are just moving the ball around so well you can possibly fault um, the Villa back line in that I think it's a little bit compact uh, at the back and I think Target kind of assigns himself to Gundogan which leaves that right wing open for Foden to come round but that ball from Rodri is so perfect into Foden and he heads it back and you know if you give the ball on a plate to Aguero like that he's he's going to score and uh, you know it was just their quality that shone through for the first goal but the second goal um I was just annoyed more than anything when I saw that goal going in that we conceded another goal from a set piece. Yeah. You know, it wasn't even like you can. There's, I was about to say you can debate the whole corner goal kick thing. There isn't really a debate to it. It's a goal kick, but um, just again seeing a, a goal like that from a set piece because if you, if you're playing against Man City, then the goals like the first goals, the goals you don't mind conceding. Surely, if if you're playing a team like that and we're having this conversation again, mate. You stop yourself conceding the goals like set, pace, set pieces, sorry, the ones that you can easily do stuff about and prevent. And if it's, you know, those 10, 11 um, pass long moves that they eventually score from, that you can accept. But another goal from a set piece it is, I is, mean, the, is the bane of our lives once again. We, again, we're sat on the podcast talking about <laughs> set pace. If I'm honest, Dan, I think we could have actually done better on the first goal. It is uh, a vintage Manchester City move in that the ball's put in. And it's immediately cut back. That's what they do. They're never going to shoot or head from 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 the, from the initial cross. You should know that. And the amount of times we fell for that sort mm. of that cross, it was it was crazy. But I think in the first phase, uh, especially something that isn't 
uh, necessarily been in the highlights if, if you've been able to watch mm. the highlights back if you've brought yourself to do that um, <laughs> there's the ball it comes out to the left and I believe it's Raheem Sterling is. he's there and both Al Mahamadi and Gilbert have the opportunity to close the ball down either one of them they've got all the time in the world Sterling's nowhere to be seen and they both jog and no one no one goes to the ball and then that ball is initially mm. put across mm. to the right hand side for me that is where the goal has come from yep. you need to you need I mean as you say we, we were so compact and it was good to see a form of uh, you know defensive solidarity for a change because it's not <laughs> yeah. been like that for a while but you can't afford to be so compact when City play so openly and expansively and I, I get that you can't and I was saying this all throughout the game you can't go closing them down every time because you're chasing shadows with City they're just that good I, I believe they're better than Liverpool to be honest with you certainly in um, a footballing sense yeah. definitely uh, but you know there, there's uh, in a moment like that Elmo had all the time in the world he could have got there and I'd have thought someone as professional as Elmo mm -hmm. would have made sure he, he got there and, and he you know even if he hit, hit it out for a throw in let us reset um, but as well as you say t target picking up Gundogan is a confusing one why yep. would he pick up a man who he isn't marking who mm -hmm. isn't on his side uh, necessarily you know Foden was always the threat uh, and again it's just it's, it's a lapse of concentration from, from that target um, it's nothing new no, but no. The, the amount of people who who think that this man deserves an England call up? It is concerning. out of my mind yeah, because he cannot it? defend to no. save his life. Not, yeah, he really can't. I, I know England are pretty straight at the left back uh, position, but I, I mean, you know, you can name I can name certainly a few who who uh, and no, I, I, I like Target. It's clear he's a wing back, not a full back, and I was surprisingly like slightly surprised by the inclusion. To be honest with you, given that we went to four at the back, I thought that would lend itself to Neil Taylor, and I, I'd spoken to. Um, a, f a few Villa fans on the day that um, sort of felt the same way that perhaps if we were going to play the truer left back in that position it is probably Neil um, and you know un unfortunately they're both limited players in, in you know opposite ways one is a better defender whereas one is a lot better going forward and um, you know I I'll, I'll pose the question to you later on when we've kind of discussed the whole game whether you, you thought the team selection was right but um, yeah frustrating that these it's Matt Target again uh, and it's set pieces again and these have been consistent problems throughout the season and Matt um, is, is a strange one because you'd think by now on a personal level regardless of what the coaching staff were doing that he'd be making some individual effort to try and cut yeah. these mistakes out or, you, or you'd like to think so but um, yeah here we are again um, talking about set pieces that's the 14th goal we've conceded from set players this season that's 20, 27% of all the goals we've conceded this season have, have come from dead ball scenarios um, and yeah I, I think you, you can the linesmen and all that sort of stuff and you know you can argue that surely that comes under the clear and obvious error bracket I can understand if that corner gets headed away then that's obviously not a clear and obvious error but when it leads to a goal I kind of feel that um, if they're so kind of objective with things like the handball rule if it just touches the hand in the bullet to a goal then it's immediately rule out I feel like if, if a blatant refereeing decision like that has been missed and it leads directly to a goal as it did um, then surely VAR has to intervene yeah. in some way that again we need that cleared up um, but yeah move, moving on more positively I watched I was sat behind the goal that Rodri scored into uh, and um I looked up at the scoreboard, 2-0, it was about 25 minutes gone. Um, I watched a few of the lads' heads go down as they trudged up back towards the halfway line. I was fearing the worst, I'm not going to lie at that point, you know, kind of, especially after what they did to Watford in the FA Cup final yeah. of last year. But, um, man, we really picked ourselves up after that and I think the lads deserve huge credit for the way that they rallied together because it would have been so easy for the um, for them to just give up at that point because it did look pretty bleak, didn't it? It did, but I think... As well, I think what played a big part in in our sort of turnaround, I think at two 0 you could tell City were like, "Oh, okay, it's going to be one of them days." Mm -hmm. And absolute kudos to the lads because City did not expect the remaining sixty, seventy minutes that we that we gave them. We fought for everything, uh, and and yeah, it didn't it didn't it didn't result in in a win for us. But at full time, you could tell they knew they'd really gotten away with it. 
mm-hmm. especially uh, with you know the Bjorn chance that was was headed onto uh, was was palmed onto the post by Bravo. He's got to be doing better than that as well, surely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, it, it was not a great header by Bjorn, so, so you'd think Bravo yeah. would have saved that more comfortably. Um, but no, this this definitely wasn't Manchester City at their best, and even you know even at the worst of time, that's, that's kind of worrying, isn't it, to see because mm. they were still mm. absolutely uh, on another level. But you know that. The, as, as you kind of touched on with the team selection, th- there was a few names who, uh, especially we discussed in the unpopular opinion, so it's certainly Nyland. Yeah. What a game he had! I Absolutely, mean, it's not very often you can say a keeper's played well when they've conceded two goals, but he made some big saves which kept us in it uh, in, at times, and it was just a shame, really, that we never really took any of the other chances mm-hmm. because. Nyland's doing all he can to make sure we're staying in this tie. It was just down the other end, really, that it, it wasn't quite good enough. Yeah, it was it was a shame. Um, uh, and it was nice that, um, you know, I saw a few Villa fans, because I was in and around the Green Man when the lineups came out, and I was kind of milling around asking Villa fans what they thought of it and that sort of thing. And there, there seems to be quite a large amount of discontent that Rayner wasn't in the eleven, And um, that I didn't really understand, because, um, I mean... Oh yeah, and almost single-handedly got us to Wembley through yeah. those semi-final legs, uh, so, and he absolutely deserved that spot. And I, I thought he proved to everyone on the day why they had that faith in him and put him in in such a big game. And again, um, I'm just going to give that guy a shout out because he's come such a long way. At, and considering how daunting the championship games seem to him at points, and how we saw um, against little teams that are kind of 30k. Um, you know, in games of Villa Park, about thirty thousand people there. Um, how afraid he could be of, of such a ground and that kind of pressure. But uh, he walks out in front of you know the best part of ninety thousand people in a cup final, um, and he looked uh, like he completely deserved to be there. Yeah. I thought he w- he looks really confident. Um, you can see now just in the saves that he makes and the way that he's he seems to be a lot more vocal as well. Yeah. Um, he's definitely a lot louder at the back than I remember him being uh, in the championship. And so, yeah, great game for him on a, on a personal level. Um, and yeah, I thought when we got on back, um, we did it at a good time. I thought it was important to get that done before the half yeah. uh, if we were going to stand any chance. And it was actually a really good goal in there, it wasn't was it? It was crazy, wasn't it, man? I mean, John Stone's proving yeah. why he can't get in the Man City team. I mean, it's an unfortunate slip, but it's the kind of thing that could only happen mm. to John Stone's, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, El Ghazi with an, a, a beautiful ball in mm-hmm. with his left foot. He was on the left side as well, which is kind of uh, a bit of a rare occurrence, really, mm. isn't it? Uh, Jack obviously sort of being in the middle. I saw some some of the pages like on on social media, just some football pages. I think one of them was like goal or something like that when they put the lineups out, and they put us as a three four three because we'd been playing that, and they had Gilbert at centre back. I'm thinking, come on, do your homework, lads. <laughs> yeah. And as well, you'd think as soon as you've watched the game, you could yeah. tell it was a four two three one. Mm-hmm. It was it was blaringly obvious. Uh, but no, amazing ball from El Ghazi in. Uh, Ali Samata as well I mean we said it in the preview man we, we said it in the preview that Samata would score yeah uh, brilliant I mean what can this man not do he's quick he he makes these runs in front of the defender behind the defender you know Fernandinho and Stones were definitely kept on their toes by Samata uh, and it, it was a brilliant header and I don't think Edison would have saved that. No, mate. It was it was fantastic. I, I think considering it's only the lad's fourth appearance yeah. in English football, uh, he looks seasoned already. I, I was so impressed with um, both the strikers that played, actually. It's annoying that um, we didn't get to see them play in a two towards the end of the game, but I thought Keenan came on and fulfilled a role really well. Yeah. I thought he caused a lot of problems. Um but Ali, from a Villa perspective, was my man of the match. Uh, yeah. I thought he was absolutely he did everything we asked of him. Uh, he ran the channels. He stretched that back four. He provides a real aerial threat, uh, and he doesn't like you know just by um, just by looking at him, you wouldn't think it. No. But he actually poses a big problem in the air. I mean, he scored all of our headed goals this season yeah. with it being two. <laughs> um, but no, it's it just that that. Zinchenko and Fernandinho matchup. Um, there was two guys in the box, um, and credits to Amwa for picking out the one claret and blue, um, blue body in there. Uh, with, as you said, what is a great cross. Um, and yeah, I, I thought going into half time, it actually looked pretty good, mate. Um, it's a shame that we couldn't uh, find that goal in the end. But as I said, I think 
it's a shame that we didn't get to see Tulip Top. I think it was just because of how hard Ali works. My, my only, um, I think Dean surely would have gone for the two up front, but I think it was just because uh, Ali seems to be coming to the end of his day. He put a lot of effort in. And um, I think one of the things that we learned in the second half is that we probably should have pressed City a little bit more in the first. Yeah. Because I found in the second half, I don't know whether this was just because the game was getting older and legs got more tired or whatnot, but um, we find, started to find some luck, especially in the last 20, where we really pressed City and we could win the ball back in the final to middle third. And um, I thought Marvellous did a really good job of that, actually, yeah. in the second half of, of um, cleaning up after that press and making sure that we won the second balls. Um, and I think perhaps in the first half, and I think this is potentially why... Um, you know, you feel a little grieve with the first goal is that maybe we showed them a bit too much respect despite, Definitely. obviously, how good they obviously are. 100%. I think, especially there was a lot of times in the second half where uh, you're seeing these traps being set and where the City players were definitely... Uh, sort of complacent on the ball I mean I, c- I couldn't tell you the amount of times Douglas Louise was on Fernandinho mm-hmm. uh, and, and Fernandinho was dispossessed and whether Lu- Louise lost the ball two seconds after or te- ten seconds after it's irrelevant we still dispossessed them uh, one of the, m- the more worrying things though um, uh, was the lack of tackles that we made and mm-hmm. as I say if you get close to them it- it's like you're chasing shadows um, but for given the lack of possession in the first half uh, and the second half um I would have expected more tackles or at least more attempts to try and win the ball back. Uh, especially, as you say, if you're trying to really press them and get in their face, just just kick them. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, play they, they're, they're the worst tactical founders in the league. I mean, Pep Guardiola essentially built a career on hurting people yeah. for Barcelona. 100%. Uh, so, you know, give give it back. And I mean, even in the second half, that, cha- that challenge that Nakamba put on Aguero, Pep's directly in the shot behind and he's just standing there Mm-hmm. He rates the challenge. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with it. He knew that that was a fantastic challenge. So he's not. He's not going to, you know, go yeah. complain about. It. He's not going to go to the fourth official and be begging for a free kick. They got the free kick anyway. <laughs> but that, that that is besides yep. the point. It was a great challenge, and it was it was at that moment really. I feel like that was a kind of turning point, as you said. We were pressing them a lot higher up, and I've said this on the podcast before. Marvis Nakamba. Mm-hmm. When we're in a full sort of press and we're in the final third, yep. you want him in that team because he wins the ball every single time when you're in the final third yeah. and he, he keeps the attack going yeah I, I thought he did a, a really good job of that um, it was interesting to see our uh, kind of if, if you look at uh, and a couple of websites have got it off the kind of average positions that both teams took up um, throughout the games City um, nine players were in our half uh, you know in terms of where they averaged it was only the two centre backs that actually and the goalkeeper sorry that um, actually stayed within their half uh, and Ours was completely different. The only two players that kind of averaged being in, in City Hearts was Samata and El Ghazi, who was actually our player that was um, seems to be furthest forward most of the time. Um, and I think that was potentially why we saw a lot of problems um, on the, the left-hand side is because we know um, Amwar, for as good as he was, and I thought he was one of our better players on the day, um, defensively, he doesn't have that, that same work rate as um, perhaps Trezeguet does. I think Trezeguet works a lot harder mm, uh, two ways. Uh, well, not a lot harder. I think it's probably marginal. I don't think either of them are the most defensively minded players. But uh, I think maybe Target was left a little bit isolated, um, especially as, as Jack was uh, you know, playing on that same side of midfield for a lot of the game as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's frustrating that we couldn't have ironed out the kinks. Uh, I mean, City obviously scored from a set piece, but they had seven attempts as a direct result of a set piece in the game. Yeah. Um, and they only managed, I think it was 15 overall. So it's about half, half of their shots came from set pieces. I thought we limited them well. Um, and, but yeah, I think unfortunately that Am- Amwar's positioning throughout the game is probably why Foden saw so much success off the right-hand side and what a game he had, by the way. Yeah. I just want to put that out there is that uh, Foden was, I mean, for an 18-year-old, is he? 19? 19. 19, absolutely outstanding from him. Um, but no, mate, uh, overall, I can't feel too aggrieved because um, 
two one and, and <laughs> sounds terrible to say, to say this before a cup final, but two one before the game wouldn't have seemed too bad given no. the, given the circumstances. And uh, yeah, when you watch City up close, they are fantastic. I mean, if they can bring on Bernardo De Bruyne, Jesus off the bench, it says all you need to know. And the way that those guys stroke the ball around, seemingly like subconsciously, the way that yeah. they they know where each other are going to be, and the way that they can so easily knock that ball about the pitch and that pitch at Wembley seems so big at times it doesn't does, it yeah I mean they must have magnets in their boots mate it's cr- crazy the football you, and you do have to put your hands up and, and and respect that they are probably the best football inside the Premier League has ever seen mm-hmm. and ever will see mm-hmm. I don't think it gets much better than that as I say Liverpool are uh, are a different kind of of footballing juggernaut really aren't they better winners but not better footballers yeah. I would say te- like yeah, technically and stuff like that I mean you can't, you can't argue with the 22 point difference no. at the top of the table can you but Man City definitely in terms of, of football they're right up there but now I mean we've probably got about 10 more cup finals left haven't mm-hmm. we Dan I mean, we're not looking uh, in a very good position the results at the weekend did not go our way no, <laughs> no. West Ham beat in Southampton mm. Norwich beat uh, who did Norwich play? Leicester. Leicester, yeah. yeah. Shock, 1-0. Um, Bournemouth getting Max a point. Hunter, but Bournemouth, yeah. I mean, Chelsea <laughs> <laughs> left it late to bail us out. We've got to start getting points on the board, mate. And I guess on paper, look, if you're looking at Leicester, I think they've only won one in, in the past two months. Yep. We've obviously beaten them fairly recently, which obviously all points towards a Leicester win, doesn't it? <laughs> of course, well, of course. We've got, we've got to get ourselves back on track. <laughs> King Power on the Monday night. I'm going to my first away for a while. Now, nice, I've, nice, I've good stuff. Had, to, good had stuff. to take a miss on yeah. quite a few, so um, I'm looking forward to it. But we, we've got to start getting points on the board, mate, haven't we? Well, for sure, mate. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not really a, like I, I understand why it's annoying that that teams are like you know and I, you know, we keep having this whole you know results didn't go away, and I'm fed up with that. To be honest with you, mate. Like I just, if we're going to stay in this league, um, it's not going to be because Norwich dropped points or because it's going to need to be because we can win football matches yeah. down the stretch, especially given the nature of the teams that we play against. We need to start making our own luck. If we're relying on other teams, um, then we're going to be in trouble for a lot, a lot of the season. And mate, I, I, unfortunately. And it frustrates me to say this. We saw those great scenes after the pitch where Dean was in the middle of the huddle giving the talk. And and you would love that that performance that we saw in the second half could be extended to each and every game that we play for yeah. the remainder of the season. But I just can't see it, uh, unfortunately. Um, I, I, I really hope that we can keep up that intensity. But it's going to be hard. What I do like is that we've done it at Leicester so recently. Um, I'd take a point very happily I, I think from that game if we I think it'd be a nice way to um to to go into the runner games and I think if we can take points from our away games and win a few at home I think we'll be all right um it's good that it's under the lights that it's on a Monday night because I think the feeling of the game will be not too dissimilar from the cup game in, yeah. in that it's you know obviously under the floodlights at the king power it's going to be a situation which um Leicester are familiar with and I haven't actually fact-checked this, and I'm sure someone in the comments might pick me up if it's wrong. Jamie Vardy isn't scheduled to play midweek. Is it tonight they play the Blues? Yeah. Tonight, Jamie Vardy's not playing. Um, I think he'll be fit for the game on Monday night, obviously, because that's just the way things work, yeah. obviously. <laughs> uh, and I think he needs one more goal for 100 in the Prem or something like that. He's, so the, he's the, the, there's, a, there's a landmark coming. It's a hundredth goal of some kind for Jamie Vardy, which means he's definitely going yeah. to score. Um, <laughs> and it's it unfortunate, but um, we have to show that desire. Uh, and the what... Dean, well, this is... I'm going to take it back to the cup final for a moment, mate, uh, and throw a question to you. Dean said after the Southampton game, there was the whole... A lot of players played themselves out of the team. But there wasn't... I wasn't that, that Rainer. Yeah, Rainer played himself <laughs> out. Okay, there, were, there weren't that many changes. I, I was no. quite interested to see what you thought about that. Uh, I'm not going to lie. A load of people, when they heard what Dean had to say, and then especially after hearing about this alleged fight that <laughs> but kicked off in the in the tunnel with Dino yeah. and, and JT, and there were fists flying everywhere and and all that shit. Um, I thought, you know, I I thought, okay, this is a different side of Dean that we've not seen. Uh, I but. I don't. That's not him, mm. is it? It's no, not. not really. I think he he's done that to to make himself to, to try and save face almost for himself uh, because you know it it's 
the players can almost get away with putting in a poor performance because it's the manager that kind of fronts the mm. media after the game and they're the ones that are going to take stick. So I think Dean did the right thing for himself mm -hmm. because as it's the first time we've publicly seen him get angry. He didn't. He wasn't even this angry uh, sort of post-Stoke, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of spurred the 10-game yep. run in the championship uh, where the, the alleged home truths were said. And how many times do we have to hear that home, home truths, truths were said, yeah. man? Because it's not worked before. <laughs> it hasn't. No. Um, if I'm being honest, uh, there was this talk of, of Dean and, and Bjorn falling out, especially after Southampton away. There was uh, about Bjorn not fancying the system, so Dean was essentially saying, all right, well, you don't play then. Yeah. So it kind of makes you wonder, did re did Dean really want to play Courtney and, and Esri? Mm. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Courtney, as you know, if you listen to the podcast. Yep. Uh, and Esri Kantzer has shown at stages what he's really capable of, you know, England under-21 defender. Uh, but, you know, there's too many mistakes between the two of them, so it was a no-brainer that Bjorn would go in for me. Um, and then when you're looking at uh, other players, I mean, I, I mean Marv has struggled to get in the team, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I, I couldn't tell you why, but I think the cup final is the best we've seen of him really since Norwich away. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. Um, it, it's and it was right, and I, and I was strange. I thought Connor Horahan was nailed to start. Uh, like I would have, I would, uh, I thought, especially if we were going to a four-three-three. I, I thought it seemed. Um, almost logical really uh, I didn't agree with Elmo on the right wing I think you can play him right back I think you can play him as a right midfielder but I don't think there's a right winger in Elmo um, and I think if we could have the chance to run the game back I don't think that would perhaps start um, See, I thought Elmo had a, had a decent game I think he he was there clearly for the the, the constant overlapping mm. but he had his job he didn't get up the pitch as much in the first half he did he was mm. he was, he was on Zinchenko quite a bit um, but I think you know putting the ball in to send us to Wembley pretty much yeah. rubber stamped his, his position in, in the lineup. but I think as well I'm just a fine Elmo's inclusion but then uh, you know looking to that other side of the wing as we've said El Ghazi did not do his job defensively and if anything it's the left hand side which is our problem mm -hmm. not the right Definitely. so you play Neil Taylor and you put a more a more solid option maybe Jack on the wing going back to, to Wembley uh, we saw the best of Grealish when he was out on the wing for 10-20 minutes mm -hmm. um, but no I, I agree I thought Conor Hurahan would have been uh, sort of the first name on the team sheet but didn't really do a lot for the first 10 I don't no. know whether that, uh, because we didn't really have the ball that much but uh, sort of certainly the last 15 or 10 minutes he was the one sort of trying to mm. G everyone up um, I, he's the kind of player who you want really playing in a cup final isn't he I think I don't want to I don't want to question anyone's sort of um, motives or whatever but he's you know, Conor Horahan it's always the story you know how he's come from League 2 mm. and that it's that sort of basic footballing mindset really of just get shit done yeah which I think he kind of encouraged a lot I, I didn't necessarily see many others trying to lift anyone during the yeah. game uh, when I feel like they maybe needed to be lifted um, and I mean there was that, that sort of last five minutes which felt like 50 and Horahan was constantly putting the ball in the box you're thinking like you know yeah. it, it's something it's got to give hasn't it yeah it, and um I think. I mean, he starts against Leicester. I think. Well, this is the thing, mate. Is I think like Wembley by di dimensions, the pitch is the same size as Villa Park. Believe it or not. But is is it not like half a meter wider or something it's, like that? It's, it's, it's very minuscule. Yeah. Fine margins. And I thought on that big pitch, um, the problem was, and and this is. Uh, this is where I think the game lended itself to Connor is that we needed someone that can pass the ball I think in terms of um, just how they're able to turn and on the half turn stroke that ball across the pitch uh, and have a wider passing range I thought that against that Man City team and again to combat the press our average we managed to string our average was stringing four passes together per move Man, Man City's was seven or eight so they're kind of doubling us and um I think it was the occasion, and I'm not going to read too much into this, but when we were pressed by Man City, we never looked comfortable on the ball. No. We were passing it round the back, and it never felt it easy. It just it, kind of made it, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it all felt a little bit forced, and I thought that was where we 
would have perhaps benefited from Connor because he's the guy that can, on the half turn, as I said, pick up the ball and play a pass 30 yards out to the other yeah. side and alleviate that press. Um, and I thought we, we kind of needed that at points um, because uh, Marvellous did his job very well, but when you press him, he looks nervous oh, and, and you yeah. can see that. And I think the only one I think I'm like kind of looking at the midfield and, and that back four that you fancy on the ball when they're being pressed is Ty. Um, I, but, but that's just because he, he exudes confidence no matter what the situation yeah. um, and so that's perhaps where I lended it to, it to Connor I thought especially considering the luck that he's seen in the Carabao this season oh, definitely, um, yeah. with the goals but I believe he made team of the tournament he did he did yeah. so um, shout out to you Connor uh, and I think it's a shame that he, we didn't get to see a lot, much more of him but look I'm, I'm not going to pick too many holes in this this performance mate because I thought given everything I was I, I left feeling really proud and it, it took about an hour hours of the coach journey home for me to kind of go ah you know what well then boys I, I, I was really pleased by what I saw it's a shame that the officiating was what it was but um, no look let's move on to the next game um, the feeling at, at, at the club was before the game that we'd already lost the cup final in yeah. that game against Southampton that was the game that the club wanted to win that was the one that everyone had their eyes on as being the most important and uh, Leicester is a bigger game for us than the cup final it uh, is now yeah at 100% especially with the way that the result's gone that, that's the game that we needed to win uh, I don't buy into the whole I'd rather win the League Cup than stay in the Premier League for me the for the future of Aston Villa and where this club needs to get to uh, we have to stay in the Premier League and I would have sacrificed the final if it means that we, we get another crack at this um, and so yeah I, I'm looking forward to that Leicester game mate I, I really hope that we see some of the spirit that was instilled into the players after the game and hopefully um, we can come away with a point or something like that because with McGinn coming back there is a lot of fixtures coming up that look winnable with that man in the team isn't there I, yeah I mean if there's a few difficult places that we've got to go to try and get points one of them obviously is Leicester it's going to be too soon for them I think they're targeting Newcastle yeah uh, which you know he's he's that's his game really yep. isn't it and he's going to come back do a big game spin probably score the winner and then Steve Bruce wow. will try and take all the credit for it in the pre and post match <laughs> because that's just what he's like uh, did, uh, do you know what I've got slightly off topic talking about Steve Bruce uh, did you see uh, the there was a there was an alleged reported bust up between him and Miguel Almiron I haven't seen um, this which uh, he shut down pretty quickly so this was aired live on Sky Sports uh, the, the press conference as they do and one of the journos I can't remember who it was I believe it's from the Daily Mail um, asked him a question uh, and Bruce goes oh you're, you're the one who wrote the, the article yeah it, it's a load of rubbish blah 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 and, and, and he goes in on him and he keeps trying to ask him a question and, and he gets he's like well you wrote it and he's like no I didn't and he goes yes you did he's like, no. and it's just this back and forth and Bruce is like well then and then he just takes a sip of his water. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I've, got to, I've got to see this. I mean, I, I, this angry this Bruce. Was, this it? was flashbacks to uh, to it's Greg God. Evans's fault that we're losing. You know that kind of stuff. He's, he's always writing yeah, negative stuff. This, so we're we've losing. seen this movie before, haven't we? Yeah, mate? it's not out of character. It's just rehashed. <laughs> but I just thought it was quite entertaining. To be oh, honest, if nothing else, that's exactly what you can get from Brucey, isn't well, it? Yeah. Some entertainment, of course. But well, not on the pitch though. Very no, very game. true. So, very true. But you know, New, Newcastle ain't doing too bad. I mean, no, we've, got to, we've got to try and drag them back in it. But I mean, Leicester, as we've kind of touched on, important game, really important game. Judging off the final, I think it's crucial we stick with four two three one for the rest of the season. And to be honest, mate, I think there's a case for that exact eleven playing on Monday night against Leicester. Well, of course, mate. I, I thought that this it was a really spirited performance. Um, I like that uh, Ali will score goals. Yeah. If we give him the service, and it's really nice to know that we have that option. I've got full faith in that man. I think he's he's a top top player. Um, I saw some really high praise. Uh, given to him, I was um, I was down at Bodymore watching the under 23s oh, yeah. on, on Monday, way. and um, I was speaking to a, a few of the guys in the club and, and stuff like that, and they're they're besotted by Ali. They yeah. really like him, um, and I, I do too. I think uh, we can really rely on that guy, and I think he's going to score some important goals. Um, me and you both had a feeling he would he would bag at Wembley, and you know if, if this guy can go and get himself another goal in that Leicester game. Um, and then boy I feel like he could go on a tear I Mate, really yeah. do I really do he's one of them I, ha I hate to make a comparison like this but it's, 
he's he's almost Benteke esque, isn't he? In, mm. in not not in how he plays, just in in how prolific I think he'll be, and how much of a cult hero this man will be. And it, I think it's such an elite mentality for him to after the game say that his goal. Yeah, it was all right, but it didn't matter because we didn't win. Mm, I that's saw that a, interview. That's a winner, man. Yeah, that, I was really impressed with that, and it's it's good that you picked that up actually. Um, and so yeah, I mean, I, I really like this guy. I think he um, can play a lot of different ways, which is good. Um, he, he's really versatile as a player, and I, I think um, I, I do. I know we don't lend ourselves to a four four two, and there are there isn't really a, a formation you can play unless you go back to a five at the back, which I don't really want to. Um, where, <laughs> to be honest, uh, where we can play to Dean's a Dean's taking note. Yeah, <laughs> back, to back. <laughs> Wiseman. <laughs> Oh, please, please, we've got to play four, um, and and it's a shame that I don't think we'll get to see the two because I actually think Keenan and Samuel Gold would work, work well. I think, yeah, I think they would. I do. I think they did. Yeah. Um, and uh, the way that when Keenan came on, we were so much better. Mm, and you know, speaking of striking options and the under twenty threes, um, I just want to issue a personal plea to Villa fans. Louis Barry is not ready for the first team. Please stop saying this. He's 16 years old. He was. He, I watched him on Monday night. He's seven years younger than the under 23s. Um, the last thing we need to do is throw this lad into the deep end. Um, if we were in a luxury position and we were mid-table and we were safe, giving him 15, 20 minutes at the end of the game, I'd be up for. Um, this lad is really good. Yeah. This lad is yeah, really. Don't get this. Don't really get Dan good. confused. No. This guy, I mean, he's bad like seven goals already. He's he's class, mate. Uh, physically, um, so I, I don't know if you saw an interview with Perslow, it was a few weeks ago, I'm, I'm assuming you did, where he said that if our, if we have 23-year-olds playing in our yeah. under-23s, we failed. He said, by that, by that stage... Back up that did this. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, we're seeing it now in, in football. Players aren't breaking through at 23 anymore. Players are, are breaking through it as teens. Uh, and it's absolutely right by that stage players need to be playing regularly and it's been such a, a flaw of the Villa Academy for so long that we haven't been letting yeah. these players get regular minutes the fact that this is Hepburn Murphy's first loan it tells like you know he broke through at 16 he made his debut under Sherwood and this is his first season that we've put him out for um, he's ended up at two clubs yeah, yeah. Well, says and, everything uh, and so these players need time um, but no uh, and so we fielded a very young side it was mostly 18, 19 year olds and you could tell physically that was why we lost against Reading um, was physically and Louis um, obviously physically he, as I said he's seven years too young for that game yeah. you know, a- a- age wise but technically you can see exactly why Barcelona bought him his first touch is exemplary Technically, he's absolutely brilliant. He obviously scored. He's a bit of a poacher as well, mate. Isn't he, he is. He can play he's old-fashioned. I love the way he plays. He the way he can pick up a ball and run at a player, at, at, and he tied a couple of players. Obviously, seven years his older in knots at points. Um, with the ball at his feet, he's an absolute dynamo. Uh, and um, three goals, three assists in the under twenty threes is fantastic. But that's where he needs to be at this oh, point. Yeah, the definitely. last thing you need to do is burden this lad with any kind of goal scoring responsibility for the first team um, to ruin and I, I also him. think Keenan Davis would be pretty aggrieved if he started yeah. to see Louis Barry getting the nod ahead of him um, so let's leave this kid where he is um, he, he shouldn't be in the first team fold yet if, if he carries on the way he is I'm a firm believer if, if you're good enough you're old enough oh, I yeah. completely agree with that not but three games in though no no. The, we need to give this lad a little bit of time uh, but no it, some pro, uh, positive signs um, from that and uh, maybe we will see him uh, play a role at some point in the not too distant future and how nice that would be mate it would, mate. I, I guess it depends on what division we're in, in all honesty. I think he, he certainly has the potential to be a Premier League striker. Uh, I'm I, I'm not going to put a, a ceiling on him. I think he's going to be a phenomenal player. And obviously, you don't play for Barcelona mm. for if if you're not good, re- realistically. The, I mean, he, he came really because, there were, I mean, there was a load of issues with his visa and that, weren't there? He didn't play for three months. He, you're not really going to fit in that that well. No. Obviously, I can't talk too much on his situation there personally, um, but you know, re- reading into that, it kind of makes sense why he's here. It's not like he's failed like all the West Brom. No, fans, of course, uh, are saying. Uh, but no, definitely, there is a striker there. And even if we go down, I mean, if as, if he's playing regular football now, maybe get him out on loan next season. He he's going to be forcing his, his way into the plans. That's for sure. I mean, I, I know he travelled to Wembley a lot. A lot. Of I was sat by him at Wembley. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. There, there you go, then, mate. It's 
he, he, he's, 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 he's getting himself ready, man. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, he if we do go down, I think he'll draw a lot from what Jude Bellingham's doing across the city. And oh, yeah. you can see players of that age um, shine. I think playing as a striker against those championship centre-backs, I think is a little different to a player that's, you know, playing in a hole and has got a bit more space and time around him. Um, but no, I, I think it, there's a lot of optimism around this lad and it's a similar kind of hype and a similar kind of ability to what we saw of Grealish yeah. when he was coming even, through. Even Carlo Her. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and there's a lot of excitement around this lad. Um, he 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 plays well and, and I, I was really impressed by what I saw from him. Uh, and there's a lot to like about that. Uh, I think it's a bit too early yet. As I said, but th- this lad can can do well. Um, I also saw Emma Follis uh, when oh, yeah. I was I was sat by her. She was sat in the row in front, and uh, I, I congratulated her because. Um, and this is something I, I feel like isn't being touched on enough. How good the ladies team have been this Very season! Good, mate. Fantastic stuff. They've been, um, and I, I went up and con- congratulated her on everything our girls are doing this season because they're um, doing the club proud in a lot of ways. Really the are. men's uh, men's team aren't, uh, and so um, yeah. There's, a lot of optimism around the club at the moment, I think, certainly after that cup final. And you hope that we can just take some of it into the stretch down the end of the season, mate. But, I mean, wouldn't it just be typical Villa to go and not show up at Leicester on Monday night? It, it would, yeah. Lose by a few and you think, where the bloody hell did that all go? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 100%. But, you know, we, we've, got to, we've got to be optimistic. We've got to get points on the board somewhere. As you say, we can't rely on other teams because they've proved at the weekend they can, they're capable of getting results. And if we're to stay in this division... Uh, one, we need to start winning teams, and two, we probably should have bought Jared Bowen in January. But that's a whole other thing. <laughs> we won't get into that. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> that was painful. Yeah, Wrong claret and blue. Wrong claret and blue, mate. But, you know, I think that's probably a good note to end the podcast Absolutely. on. Um, proud of the boys, nonetheless. Uh, we'll be Completely. even prouder if you manage to, to stay up. I think four wins does it, saying that. It's Villa, so cross. It, how long did it take us to get to four <laughs> wins anyway? But I, yeah, I, think we, I think we've got this. I'm trying to remain optimistic. I really Absolutely. am. Absolutely. Four, two, three, one. Dean, if you're listening, do it. Got to be the way forward. It's got to be the way forward. More solid, uh, and and just that that discipline. That's what we need from from the lads. It really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you enjoyed this pro- podcast, hit the like button. Comment your thoughts below and subscribe. For more. We hit 1,700. Dan. Big, big. Uh, yeah, I like so, that. Yeah, nice. Thank you guys for your Going support. Well, close if, to that giveaway. That give. Yep. As we say, if we reach 2,000 subscribers before the end of the season, me and Dan will be giving away. And Ali Samash, I almost said sign then, it's not going to be signed, sorry. <laughs> we, don't, we, we, we don't know him personally, unfortunately. No, unfortunately. Uh, so we will not. be giving away an Ali Samash shirt for you guys. Uh, so, yeah, if you can get us that, I mean, 300 subscribers before the end of the season, I think we can do it. Dan. Doable, mate. We've Doable. Got, um, I mean, like 100 subscribers a month, and we're there pretty much. People are going to so, want a Samash shirt, let me tell you. Mate, this guy's going to bag. This guy's guy is going to bag. This is going to be one that not even classic football shirts will yeah, have. This is going to so, be a piece. So, so, get subscribing, get guys, subscribing, for sure. Guys. Up the villa. Jeff's is essential. The full fill in this got potential. It's a main man, a hero. He's the main leader of the gang. Jeff's